All right, it's kind of a special day or occasion because I get to collect pollen for the first time from this red fleshed apple that I tasted for the first time last year. So for anyone that doesn't know the background here, I started trying to breed apples about uh, maybe 12 years ago, something like that, 2011 I think. One of my main goals has always been to make improved red fleshed apples because the, there are red fleshed apples but the quality is pretty dicey. Now from what I tasted last year, this seems to be the apple I've been trying to breed, you know, the apple that I want to eat and grow. But obviously I'm not just going to rest on my laurels here. I'm going to take this and start using it to breed more improved red flesh apples with different seasons, different flavors, different looks, you know, all kinds of different things. So today I get to collect pollen from this and I'll be using that for further breeding and I'm also going to pollinate these flowers obviously and try to get something out of those too. Now there are not very many blossoms. There's three here and this morning I found one more cluster that looks like it could end up opening and give me some more pollen but probably at best I'm going to end up with like six flowers worth of pollen. Now if I use that really carefully it could actually go quite a ways and I can make a lot of pollinations onto other apples. Obviously if this only has a few blossoms it's only going to produce a few apples and I can only do so much with these. Before this opened I put this bag over it so that you know this is open enough for insects so if I had left this open, an insect may already have visited and pollinated it with whatever happens to be, whatever pollen happens to be sticking to their bodies. And I don't want that. I want to put the pollen I want on here. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is going to be a very delicate operation. I have to be really careful because I could easily break off this entire cluster or any one of the blossoms. I could damage the reproductive parts that are in here that I'm trying to pollinate. Now normally I don't remove the male parts that produce the pollen, I just leave them there. But in this case I want to both pollinate this flower so it makes a fruit and I want to take the uh, male parts off and save them so I can get the pollen to pollinate other things. So I'm going to use a tiny pair of scissors to clip just those things off and save them. There are five little stalks in the middle. Those are the girl parts and we want to keep those so we can pollinate them so I have to be careful not to cut those. Around the outside there's a whole ring of stalks with these little yellow like ball looking things on there. Those are the boy parts so I have to cut those off carefully without damaging the parts in the center. It's a delicate operation. Now when I first started breeding apples I would actually do this to every single blossom that I pollinated. Uh, don't do that anymore because most of them aren't self-pollinating and I didn't really know that at the time. But again, the only reason I'm doing it here is to get the pollen. And I want every single one of those suckers. This is about maximizing the amount of pollen I can get out of this so I can make as many cross-pollinations as possible. See one more there. And I think there's one more, but it's way down in there. And I'm not gonna try to get it because I don't want to mess those up. There is my first few little bits of pollen right there. I'm gonna put that into a paper packet, just like this one here, so that um, they'll dry. And by this evening, I may have a little bit of pollen to work with, and by tomorrow morning I should have more. Now these here are still small so I want to wait till tomorrow morning to gather the pollen from those and pollinate them. Okay now let's talk about parents. There are three apples that are really obvious to me to want to cross with this and those are Pink Parfait, Williams Pride, and Pinker Lady. The reason I want to use Pink Parfait is because it also has pink flesh um, but not as dark as this. This is much darker. Uh, but it's a really high quality dessert apple so it's going to you know it's going to reinforce the red flesh gene plus it's going to bring some really high dessert quality attributes and it's also super late hanging which i love i love eating those things i can eat them sometimes as late as february off the tree the reason i want to use williams pride is it's a high quality dessert apple so again i'm bringing high quality genetics in often a, a little bit of pink flesh so again, I'm kind of, you know, reinforcing that and it is disease resistant. So it's scab resistant, which both of the parents of this, uh, King David and Rubiot, are both very scab prone apples. 
King Dave isn't horrible, but Rubiata is pretty bad. I mean, it's probably a four out of five. Okay, so Pinker Lady is one of my apples that has the same red flesh parent as this, which is a reason that it's not the highest priority and I probably won't use it today. But it does bring another high quality dessert apple in the mix, which is Pink Lady, AKA uh, Crips Pink. It's also called Crips Pink. I just think Pink Parfait and William Sprite are the two best. So I'm gonna mark this one as Pink Parfait and pollinate all three of these flowers with Pink Parfait. And with any luck, they'll all produce fruit and seeds. And I'll get to plant those, and then in another five to ten years after that, we'll know how awesome those apples are going to be. Some of them are going to be really good. Not all of them, for sure. Okay, so now I look through my little pollen caddy right here and find Pink Parfait. And we get one of these tiny little micro applicators. These are makeup brushes, basically. You can buy, like, packs of them. Get a tiny bit of pollen and dab it onto those girl parts. So all I have to do is touch a tiny bit of pollen onto these, right on the end. Probably one quick touch is enough, but you know, I'm gonna kinda go overboard here. And I can literally see the pollen sticking to the end. It wants to get pollinated, you know? It's got some sticky stuff on there or whatever so that, you know, all it takes is a little brush of a bee with some pollen in its fur. And then I'll actually do this again tomorrow on these when I pollinate these guys here. When I get that pollen either tonight or tomorrow or maybe the next day, I'll try to shoot some footage of going out and pollinating some different stuff with that. Um, we're going to do that a little bit different because, again, I'm not concerned with having to remove the male parts on the other flowers, just on this because I'm trying to go double duty on this and get pollen and pollinate it. Okay, so we're going to bag this back up because if I don't, these are going to open in the morning and a bee's going to visit them and it's all over. What I have here is a King David branch that I bagged off a while ago when all the blossoms were closed. This is going to be a back cross, right? Because the parent of the apple I'm using is Rubiot x King David or King David x Rubiot, I'm not sure which. The tag is lost, but it's one of those. And this is King David. So back crossing basically means inbreeding. You know, you're you're inbreeding the fruit in order to reinforce certain traits. The reason I'm doing it here is because, you know, King David is just an excellent apple overall. Like if I could just take King David, overlay the red flesh and the red flesh flavor, I'd be super happy. And this apple is not unlike that, but I just want to see what happens if I back cross it to King David again. Suspected for a long time, like from the beginning when I made this cross, that there'd be a synergy between red fleshed apple genes and apples with really dark skin color, uh, like King David. So I'm just thinking, um, why wouldn't that synergy remain in a back cross? you know, uh, and, and still give me a very red fleshed apple. And again, like kind of just reinforce the great traits of King David, but I'm not going to make more than one branch of this particular cross. So this time around, I'm not removing any of the, the male parts or messing with the flower at all. Really. There's very little pollen in here. If I tease the anthers around a lot I can get more pollen out of it and I can see that there's pollen stuck to the sides of the packet that's why I use this black paper because I can see the pollen and so if I roll this around on the sides of the packet I know I'm picking up pollen but I can't see it now in a lot of apples and in this one fortunately the female parts stick out pretty far and they're not hard to find. Like sometimes in certain varieties, they'll be buried way down inside here. So when you're trying to pollinate, you'll end up like wiping your pollen all off on here and picking up a bunch of that pollen. So in this case, I can pretty much target just the parts I wanna hit and just barely tap those. This one here isn't quite open yet, so I'm just gonna tease that open. And with this variety, I'm being very careful not to contaminate my pollen packet with other pollens because I want to make sure that I'm getting the right parent. So I'll use this swab up and then I'll grab another one to get more pollen out to do these flowers here. Because I really doubt there's anything left on there. But you know, if I can get three, four, five apples off of this branch, then that's plenty. Yeah, I can see a little pollen on there. And I'm going to target the flowers that look the freshest, nice, young, fertile blossoms. Okay, so, you know, since I may have more pollen in here, I'm just going to go and hit everything again. 
use anything up that's left. And I'll probably get a few apples, I hope. So now this year when I'm done with these bags, I've been tying them off really tight then I know that that bag's finished and I don't have to do anything else with it, except I didn't label it. So again here, I'm gonna you know, have this bagged branch. Now these flowers, um, I guess the only ones you guys can really see in the frame are these. And you can see that these are just opening this morning. That's fine, that, that's actually really good. They're real easy to pollinate at that stage and I can just pull them open or pull the petals off. Even this one right here is fine. Uh, some of the other ones on this branch are not maybe so much open. Here's some right here. I could open and pollinate that and that, but these are a little bit too young. But that's okay because enough of them are open that if I pollinate this once now, that's probably enough. And I won't tie this bag off, so I'll know that, you know, it's not necessarily finished and I might want to hit it again if I'm out here maybe in two days. That would be about right. Let's see if we can get you guys a view into this packet here. I'm gonna open this up, see if I can avoid spilling this precious cargo. You can see what's going on here is I have all these dried up anthers. Some of those still have pollen in them, it's kind of stuck, and so I'll grind around with the brush. And the more I do that, the more I'll see pollen start to pick up on the, the sides here. So I can see like, hopefully you guys can see that if I rub this really thoroughly in that one area, that I end up with a spot that looks different, right? That's because I picked up all the pollen that's on there. So I know it doesn't look like much, but you know, this stuff is microscopic. It does not take much to pollinate a flower. So I'm just gonna keep using this until it looks like there's nothing left. And I think there's a few more anthers I can get off of the uh, original plant. There's like two more blossoms I think that I haven't done yet. This is Sweet 16. This sweet 16 apple that I'm eating is amazing. It tastes like, almost like a cinnamon cherry candy. And this this one's just perfectly ripe. Um, this is an amazing apple. This year it's been really, really good. I've been feeding it to a lot of people and getting their response. And you know, everyone's pretty amazed at the flavor. It's an amazing variety and the, the flavors in this apple are, are just outstanding when it's uh, at its best. I'm really gonna try to take care of this tree this year. It likes some irrigation and care to produce the best quality apples, but it's like this spicy cherry candy flavor when it's at its best. So I, it has some really great attributes and flavors and mixing those flavors with the flavors from red fleshed apples, which are real fruity and, and like berries and punch and stuff, just seems like a no brainer. Um, I have not been like super impressed with the crosses that I fruited so far of Sweet 16, uh, but there's one that I think is gonna be very likely one of the best apples I've bred so far. It's only produced a minimal amount of fruit so far, but it's blooming like crazy this year. So this is the year I'll really get to test that variety out. I'm so excited about that variety that I grafted tons of it and I'm already using it to breed with and I've only tasted it like three apples ever. And one was half sunburned. I just picked up a little more pollen out of here. Just wanna make sure we get some of these. So like these right here, I'll just kind of pull that open and hit the, whatever they're called. You know, there's still a lot of closed flowers that I could hit, but at some point I could pollinate so many of these that it's gonna be too many and I'll have to thin some off or it'll break the branch. So, you know, there's that too. So if I don't get back to this branch, it's fine. I won't be surprised if these don't do well, but I'd be surprised if I don't get any pollinations off of this and, and any seed. Pollination is uh, the thing that, I've evolved the most and changed the most over time and I'm still kind of figuring it out, but I'm kind of liking what I'm doing right now. Yeah, so uh, give us five to 10 years, we'll start to find out what these things taste like. And this project's just getting really exciting now because I'm getting to work with my own varieties that I've bred and I'm crossing varieties that I bred with other varieties that I've bred now. You know, I'm getting to work with an apple and this this new red fleshed apple. And this, you know, this is the probably the best red fleshed apple I've ever eaten. I can't really think, maybe like a really good specimen of um, Rubiot you know, would compare that I've had before. Otherwise, it's like I'm now breeding with a new generation of red fleshed apple that's the apple that I wanted to grow and eat and work with. And it can only get better from here, right? This is about building on successes. 
And, you know, I took Albert Edder's early work. I feel like he needed one more generation, you know, and he would have produced an apple like this. But as it is, this seems to be better than any, any of the apples I've had of his. I hope he's watching um, and understands that, uh, you know, he's, he's appreciated and his work is, is being carried forward by me and lots of other people now.